very good morning to all of you let us go for the next lectures on river bank protections and the control structures this is the second part of uh, river bank uh, protections as we discussed in the last class about river revetment today we will talk about the spar permeable spar uh, impermeable spar and how we can uh, decide the layout of the spars those the things we will discuss in detail but how about the more design and all the things will not go much uh, details uh, uh, like for examples we are following mostly for the indian conditions as you know it uh, uh, river bank protections work uh, extensively has been done for many river like ganga brahmaputra brahmini many river we have successfully completed river bank protections and we have lot of experience how to uh, protect the river bank or how to uh, understand the river behavior and control and training which is much earlier 1971 and 2012 uh, report about protections of pajuli island is part of the brahmaputra rivers on the flood and erosions that's the part i'll cover it uh, as again i need to repeat it we are not going more detail uh, design components you can follow any of the indian standard codes to how to design that part or you can uh, go more details about uh, this book uh, which is uh, published in year 2016 so that's the major aspect what i want to talk about to you now i would talk about the many of the times we when you have a rivers you have a the very large gradient rivers and we want to reduce the slope of a channels so we want to reduce a slope of channels so what we try to create we create a small structures okay like a structures what is there okay small creep or the timbers uh, these are validate for the hilly regions where you have a steep gradient of slope and if you construct a small uh, drop structures so for like here is a timbers or sloping up roots like a drop structures that means slowly you uh, depositions will be there and it can modify the slopes so it can reduce the slope of a channel to stabilize the bank and basically it's also does uh, because of the step wise we have uh, this uh, drop structures which velocity reductions also effective on energy dissipations so we can have a very simple structures okay log and timbers okay uh, drop structures or you can have a gabion or you can have a small wires okay this is what we do it when you talk about this so the basically the efficiency of grade control structure decrease the increasing the stream size the gabion may be used for constructing where drop structure where adequate filter materials are available so the basically these are small structures are used as a drop structures to reduce the velocity and start the sedimentation okay that's what is that and how to design all these things as a drop structures you can follow any of the uh, test books on this but uh, you can understand it's a very easy concept to know it how uh, we reduce the slope of a stream same way you want to make it uh, the bank is protected you can have a concrete walls okay these are uh, uh, okay where you have a small streams and you want to protect a certain stretch of the uh, river bank you can think about to have a concrete wall okay so you can have a backfill you can have a drain systems and or you can have a masonry wa wall with a backfill and concrete things or you can have a gabion wall okay so you can have a backfill pits so basically gabion is a baskets with a metal masses geotextiles are filled with stones have a wide vessels for the hydraulic structures nowadays gabions play the major roles and you can have a filter cloth so you can have the filter cloth 
and uh, this is what you can have a uh, this is typical wall you can construct it is very large and here you can have a the concrete walls ok. These are the basic structures you can protect a, a smaller reach the more vulnerable because it is quite expensive to have a, this type of structures where you go about a uh, channels where the depth is more than 5 to 6 meters then cost will be much much larger. And if you go for the next part if you see that uh, you can have a stone reef raft and the river is uh, flood level is here you can have a rainforest con uh, concrete uh, base with a stem with a wall cantilever upward of this face ok. These are good uh, when we talk about the smaller rivers as well as you can consider this retaining wall the cost is so expensive but this is what is showing is the drain also it is showing the ground water tables ok how it is there or you can have a uh, can have a this reinforced concrete wall like this with having the buttress in the both the sides ok. So, we can have a cantilever wall. So, the basically the stem is designed to resist the lateral soils and the hydrostatic forces. The soil above the base provides a mass to resist the movement which is very basic things ok. And uh, well stem may be the supported or stiffened by the buttress front of the wall that is what is here contorted behind the walls. So, these are the small structures uh, it is not used for a larger river like Brahmaputra. But smaller streams and you have a vulnerable reach you can think for this type of protections work ok. If you go for the next ones in a smaller case scale we can have a this the pile seat piling wall ok. So, we can have a seat piling this is filling materials this is the dredged part. So, you have a this original bank lines then you have a cotton fill and you create the seat piles ok. So, basically a flexible wall or flexible block heads we can be seat piling walls normally constructed by the driving the seat piling that is what we do it and you can have a uh, anchor is uh, the increase the allowable heights ok. So, with a flexible cantilevers if you look at that you can have a anchors and you can have uh, the seat piling things ok and you, you can do the geotechnical design of the seat piling what could be the depth and how what type of anchoring you should provide and what is the strength of anchoring those things you can uh, look it as a geotechnical perspective to design the seat piling and whether it can have a cotton field or it can have a anchored wall ok. So, it may provide a structural members is buried beyond the zone of active movement within the soil a rod is connected to that member tension against the wall ok. So, you can design the exit filing wall ok these are small structures we can construct it along a small rivers where we have a the much much vulnerable uh, stretches. Now, let us come back to the uh, many points we cannot make it the bank protections with the revetment of the walls ok. We try to look it the divert the flow from the bank that is the idea that flow should not come closer to the bank we can deflect the flow that deflect the flow from the river. So, if what we look at that we do a small it is a hard points like if you look at that if I construct a hard point here ok. If you look at this is a bank line and if I construct a hard point here. So, you can understand it the flow will be deflected. So, you draw just look at the stream lines just look the stream lines. So, flow will deflect it because of the deflections of flow the these regions will have a low velocity zone. So, that way we are protecting that bank. So, that is what the deflections are happening it. So, we need to this type of structures the petrobate into the river we can construct it which will be the hard point which will be deflect the streamlines. As the uh, flow streamlines will be deflected it these regions will have a low velocity regions 
as it is a low velocity regions, so uh, there will be not bank erosions will happen there. So, we divert the flow that is what we do it. The structure extend the short distance into the river channel okay, and it is supplemented with a root sections. Okay. Uh, it is not only this hard points, it should have a spall like with a tie back and the top soils. The majority of the structure is invisible, lower part of considered rock placed under the waters, upper part is covered with the top soil seeds with native vegetations. We can put it like that with a native vegetation and all. The basic idea is that deflect the flow from this erodible bank constructing these hard points which is not much technically or the stones with have a tie backs and you can have a spot and then the top you can with the top soil with the seed you can have the vegetation layers. So, if you look at the next slides which are talking about as a engineering points we talk about the spore and groins ok. Spore are the groins which is a structure or embankment projected at a fair distance from the bank into the stream to deflect the flowing water from away from the bank. If you look at these structures, if I have a, a series of spore structures here, series of spore st structures, because of that flow will be deflected from this erodible bank. Exactly if you look at the spore, more details what will happen in it? the flow will deteriorate and here it will create a zone with a low velocity zones. So, that is the reason it prevents the erosions on the bank, it is used to channelize the wide channels like for example, if you look at these figures which is having a series of the groins and the spots, you can understand it, uh, this is what the erodible banks, okay. this is what the erodible bank and there are the different shape of the spore structures are there, different shape of the spore structures are there, these spore have a the flow which is deflected by this and because of this spore, so it is a deflected, so it is away from this bank. So, this layer series of the layout of the spore with uh, different size, shape, we can put it the basic idea is that the deflect this main streamlines the away from the bank which is the erodible bank. So, the basic idea is to channelize the wide poorly defined stream into well defined channels and the projected length if of impermeable spore, the spore through water cannot pass through it, it can help to less than 15 percent of channel width, but in case of permeable spore where through the water can pass through, the sediment can pass through, it can go up to at maximum should be less than the 25 percent. That means, 25 percent of the length of the rivers, we can put the permeable spar, but in case of impermeable spar, we can put it at most the 15 percent of channel width, we can put this type of structure, the spar structures. Now, if you look at more details, here you can understand it. Uh, because of the spore structures, how this improving the channels, this is a mathematic models there. Okay. So, because of the spore structures layouts and if you look at this velocity vectors, uh, now it is river is confined with this and these are the higher velocity zone, this is the lower velocity zone. So, it is a channelize the ch river as well as it is protect the banks, that is what it happens in this case, there are the spores. Okay. And these spots are confined the river with a smaller width as well as it is a protecting this. And if you look at these figures with, with having the channel bifurcations, there are series of the spot structures are there, series of spot structures are there. And because of presence of these structures, you can see this velocity zone, this is the higher velocity zone, this is a lower velocity zone. So, it is deflect the flow from this zone it goes through that once. So, there is very very less flow in this uh, branching part where it the main flow is go through this once also it has make it the deeper channels 
also it makes a default channel through these ones. So, same way uh, there are a lot of study has been done it with a uh, simulating the turbulent flow with a series of the main river with the natural channels. This is the Mississippi rivers and this uh, two rivers the hydropower plants and if you look at velocity distributions and the bed elevations how varyings are there. So, you can try to understand it how these concepts are there and you can use these CCS2D models can be simulated for the flow in river flow divergence start to this thing. So, you can understand it how the mathematical models can be help us to know the layout of the spots and what could be the dimensions, what is the length and what will be the layout for that. Now, if you look at the typically as far is the embankment structures, if you look at that and there is more details about design of detail spots is available in IS code. Here I just graphically I am showing that spot will have a this type of cross sections, if you can understand it, it will be the embankment and having a stone pitching from front side, upstream side as well as the downstream side. This embankment could have a width, the top width would be 3 to 6 meters depending upon the 1A roads or 2A roads you are planning it and you have a high flood levels and you can have a free board 1 to 1.5 meters and you can have a stone rebatement in the both the sides, in the both the sides if you taking a cross section at these points. Okay. If you take a cross section at the y y locations means here you can see that there is a embankment and there is a stone rebatement it is indicating for us where is the high flood levels the free boards, but the downstream of this we should not provide any rebatement uh, because uh, it is not necessary to have a rebatement as you can see it. To protect this uh, the scour hole positions are this look uh, we should have a launching aprons okay. and that launching apron can have a this uh, thickness the stone pitching thickness is that they are and it could have a layer wise and the dimensions is, is given here. So, if you look at that way the spar is uh, uh, imperviable spar is nothing else is a embankment is constructed with a stone revetment uh, using the Gavian mattress uh, and to protect this uh, the scour formations you should provide the launching aprons and that what is the stepwise launching aprons and that is what will be show you that what conditions are coming it. So, that that is what is uh, the basic structures of a design details of a spot many of the times we confine the rivers okay it's consulting having the guide banks okay so if you look at the guide banks that means basically at then look at at the bridge cross section near the end of the approach we can have a guide bank so if you try to look it when you have a the guide bonds okay both the sides you will have to have a stone riprap and you will have a flow converging to this okay so we will have the scour holes here to protect this, if you see this, there will be a stone riprap, the high flood levels, and there is a geotechnical design of this embankment, considering the uh, top width, considering this freeboard, all we can design it a, as a guide bonds. Okay. More details we do it with having a physical modeling studies or mathematical modeling. Uh, the shape of the guide bank, which is you can see it is a quarter ellipse with a major or minor axis ratio of 2.5. So, major axis should be approximately parallel to the main flow directions. So, that is what it and basic the idea is to reduce the flow disturbance like eddies and the cross flow. So, we should try to lay out a guide bond such a way that it should not create the flow disturbance like eddies or the cross flow. Okay. So, uh, just trying to trace that you try to look at how we will have the guide bonds and if you look at the next part which is uh, done it for uh, 
Majuli River Islands, which is there in the report, so K protections of Majuli River Island emergence in 2012. You can see these rivers, okay, and they want to have a guide bond at these locations, okay, and for that, this physical model set up with a permeable spar with a guide bond. So, it has been created that uh, physical model setup to try to know it that how they performs the guide bond also permeable spot, how they are performing it to diverting the flow and channelizing the flow. That is what if you look at the figures here, you can see the channels, you can see that island and you can see this the guide bond and same things is put in, in a physical models before implementing these structures, we can try to look at what type of things we can do it, because it is a quite expensive uh, uh, for implementing these structures and as you know it, if you want to implement any anything in the structures, you cannot remove immediately. So, that is the reasons first a series of physical experiment is to be done it, try to know it, how the flow is happening it, the scour hole formations the uh, channel uh, deepening is happening it, how effective uh, impermeable or permeable spots, those are things we should look at by measuring this flow, velocity, streamlines with a different flow conditions like 10 year return period plot, 15 year return period plot or 5 year return period plot. So, those things we can conduct the experiment and we can try to understand what is happens in the same way you can implement on these rivers. Okay, that is the strategy we followed it for any big river training works. Now, if you look at uh, many of the times we also have a retracts, okay, which is a very simple structure. Okay. So, basically we can create a, a flow parallels, uh, it is not embankment, we allow these things to over top it, that is what is that. It is a two of bank slope parallel to the stream you used to decrease the velocity behind the structures. So, the basic idea is that as the flow exceeds in that places you will have a flow reductions. The height of the structure usually one third to two third of the stream bank height okay, that is a retriders okay. So, you can see it, it is a retrider. Some of advantage of these structures are that it can adopt it in wide range of conditions, channel alignment can be improved and usually less costly. So, okay. so you, you are not protecting the bank, you are creating a retriders which is a far away from the bank, but which we think have a one third to two third height of the stream bank height to so that it will reduce the velocity in these zones, the irradiable zones. Okay. Now, if you look at uh, we also have a since the dikes are the spots, okay, a stone for uh, hill dikes and timbers dikes and you can see this flow controlling structures what is constructed it because of that flow is that and you can see in photographs okay the series of dike structures okay uh, it's nowadays it's easy to see it, the dike structures uh, any of the satellite imageries so arrangement of piles depending upon the velocity of flow the quantity of the serpent sediment transport depth and width of the rivers. Okay. The length of the dike depends upon channel width, the positions related to other dikes and flow depth. The spacing varies 3 to 20 times of the length of the upstream dike and the wear fence may be used to conjunctions of the pile dikes to collect the more the sediment or reduce the velocity. So, if you look at this way, we also have a uh, very long spot, basically dikes are very long spar, okay, spar is a shorter, so like dikes are the longer. Now, let us look at that what are the design approaches which are very uh, qualitative ways of design approach is that we should familiar with overall stream meandering patterns. Whenever you construct the dikes, we should have a the knowledge of river meandering patterns as we discussed. That means, it needs to have a, a thorough morphological studies last 100 years and 200 years, try to know it, what could be the pattern of the stream 
binary patterns okay that is the scale we should work it. Uh, we should work it that upstream and downstream terminations points okay. The downstream terminations points should have existing nick knot of the bank stabilities and the upstream terminating points should correspond to downstream and adjacent point bar deposition zones okay. And uh, alignment should be smooth okay. That should not be about changes in the radius then you have the more problems. The signed inspection is there to know about storm stream characteristics, cross section, bed and bank material and the soil boring. Okay. And there should be always have a two protections is a necessary and the two protections should be the heavier at the downstream point of the maximum attack. So, these are general guidelines, but detailed design of the dikes also we or the retrights we look at uh, as a geotechnical design or the hydraulic designs uh, conducting at the physical experiments or the mathematical studies for that stretch of the river. I will show a one of the case studies what we did it for the Brahmaputra rivers and of this my presentations. So, if you look at that uh, many of the times it is not that way to measure this so expensive work for a larger rivers. What we try to do it a jetty field. Okay. The basic idea of the jetty field it is a just a wear mass. Basic idea is that to add a roughness or the reduce the velocity in the flow on the bank or the channels on a selected path. As it is reduce the velocity and if I have a lot of sediment loads then the sedimentation can start it, the deposition can start it. So, adding the roughness it reduce the velocity protect the bank from the erosions. And if it is effective if debris carried by the stream, if it the streams having a lot of debris and these debris can plug up it here and that what it gives additional resistance and that what make it the sedimentations if you have a lot of sediment concentrations flowing over that. It stabilizes the meandering river, it is necessary to have a jetty field in both the side of the river to prevent the choat across the point bars. If you look at uh, same concept design approach specification of jetties, if you can see that uh, jetty fields looking from the satellite data, you can see the jetty fields. Okay. So, the basically it is a steel jacks together with the cables. Okay. So, the jacks are divided the basic triangular frames tied with together with a tetrahedron frames. Uh, tetrahedrons are placed parallel to the embankment and the cable together with the end of the cables anchored to the bank. Both the lateral longitudinal row of jacks are used to make the jetty field. So, we do not put in a single jetty, there could be a series of the jetty field, we can put it uh, lateral, we will have an angle like this spacing varies depending upon the debris and sediments. So, you can see it the jetty field which is that steel jacks, but still it is a costly. Okay river like Brahmaputra or where we want to stabilize the river for certain years, we cannot go for a steel jacks with a cable which is followed in US uh, Association of Civil Engineering 1963 uh, with having a jetty field and the vegetation of Arayo Grande jetty systems that is what he, you can see in the photographs. That is what not will really be possible like country like India. So, what we do it, we do a very simple concept which is called the Prokofi, low cost permeable spar implemented in Brahmaputra rivers or the some of other uh, smaller rivers. So, we can have a the RCC Prokofines, okay, same concept okay, which is a stables can be laid at the site and you can see the photograph of RCC Prokofines, the dumping of the RCC and we can create a Prokopine spot. So, you can see the top layout, okay. the top layout of the Prokopines. So, it can have an anchoring and you can have a series of Prokopine structures with the anchoring. Okay. So, that way you can create a field and this is a your embankment. Okay. So, you can anchor it and it is the flow directions and you can try to look it work as a the field. Prokopine spore field. So, because of 
a series of the Prokopovian structures we put it and that Prokopovian structures is reduce the velocity and that reductions of the velocities help us to do the sedimentations and that is the sedimentation because of that this bank is protected as well as channel also divert from these places. Now, if you look at other one is a smaller structure is called the bands. Okay. Uh, if you look at these photographs, you can understand it is the band systems. Okay. Uh, you can look at these uh, structures. The basic idea is the same thing flow away from the eroding bank lines okay. and it is a directed away from the uh, eroding bank. Uh, end of the dikes are subject to a local scour that is what you have to look at. So, these are the band field and it is the flow which is divert from that it can have a rock or erosion resistance materials, it can design water surface elevations, appropriate allowance should be made to loss of the dikes material into the scour holes and side slope can be provided. So, just you look it these are the smaller structures which is also implemented in Kosi river in Nepal. Uh, if you look at these small structures can divert the flow away from the eroding bank lines and that is what is create the field uh, the flow stream lines will go like this okay it will not attack here. So, this type of structures also put it uh, in river bank to divert the flow okay this this is good for a uh, smaller rivers where we can have a flow diversions like this. No doubt so that is called bend way weights. Okay, this is the last uh, layout what I am talking about you. Uh, you can see this bend weights okay, uh, which is US association of civil engineers are uh, prepare the guidelines to prepare this type of structures dumping of this with the slope in a band. Uh, idea is that uh, loosely located the navigation channel band, the weights are typically built with a 4 to 14 weights per band okay. and designed to control near bed the flow velocity and which reduce the secondary flow and water is directed away from the outer banks that is what it happens it is the same structures, but the here is a cost effectiveness because of a small structures we put it as a where as you have seen this thing which help us to this more uh, design guidelines and all you can look it bandway wares which is there in US crop of armies and all. Before concluding I want to show you that one morphology studies what we have done for the Brahmaputra rivers uh, basic idea is to know it using the mathematical models whether we can predict the sort of morphology of Brahmaputra rivers with or without river training works. So, the basic idea is that uh, using river modeling works can it is ok for to predict the braided river morphologies and basic uh, objective is that to get a navigable flow depth because there is a no the guidelines for a braided river systems how you have to put the ground fields and uh, physical modeling as it is uh, you know it is a uh, having the scale effect it has a steady state flow conditions or the high cost okay both the things you know it very well. Now, if you look at this river stretch which is uh, here okay is a middle part of the Brahmaputra rivers about 13 kilometers we use the satellite data you use the river models and we try to collect the field data and satellite data to validate this the prediction of morphology the hydrodynamic and the bed are they correct okay is it acceptable the uh, by using the simulations models which is having the upstream boundary condition downstream boundary conditions uh, and more details are there in the journal of hydraulic engineering okay that is what you can uh, cross refer it. Uh, now, if you look it, uh, it is a quite interesting study and challenging study we did it. Uh, these are the survey transect and each transect we measure the velocity flow depth and so this is a showing it in a 
how the the bar positions with the 2006 pre monsoon 2007 post monsoon within the year okay how the things has changed the polygons are the centers and village representing that extend in 2006 impose of december 2007 okay so that uh, that much of morphology change is there in centers and all and we are fitting this data into the two dimensional hydrodynamic models with a sediment transport so if you look at that we try to predict the thaleg lines okay so if you look at that simulated versus observed the thaleg line prediction is quite enough okay by fractions points and this the same way if you can look at simulated versus observed uh, how these conditions has changed okay and how the predictions are there uh, with a morphological cases 2007 pre flood seasons to 2008 the post flood seasons how the best map with a satellite data we just compare it whatever we predict it how accurate they are so uh, that way if you look at uh, next part look at the velocity the velocity ranges from 1.2 to 2 meter per second the simulated velocity within the range but there will be scattered that there is a uncertainty in velocity measurement in the field also the the river models what we consider the turbulent structures and all there is certain degree of uncertainty and that is the reason you can have the scattered plot but more or less if you look at the range of the velocity predictions are fairly good but in case of the flow depth uh, I think it is quite interesting this flow depth is considered much accurately uh, even if in a braided rivers with if you look at the observed and the simulated part observes are the dots points distance along these cross sections okay and the velocity if you look at uh, which is varies from 1.5 to 2 meters morally it is a following that trend. Now if you look at the river cross sections this is what we have a observed is a solid lines and the circulars is a predicting things uh, I think it is a it is a predicting very well and these are the cases and this is the cross sections at different points and you can see this comparisons of predicted measure the bed level upstream middle and downstream sections. So, for similar way if you look at next part if I put the river training structures okay uh, like there are the primary channels there are the secondary channels okay and if I put the spore structures with a simulated and calibrated models I can see that how the flow velocity factors are changing it whether this bank is protected or not whether it is a closing down these secondary channels or not all these things we can do a studies once you have a calibrated validated models for a certain stretch. So, uh, you can see this velocity vectors and how complexity is velocity vectors are there and that is what uh, showing in the uh, the flow depth and velocity vectors uh, it is a showing in the groin fields or the spore field if you put it in different spore field how does it behave. So, nowadays it can be done it before implementing the field we can know it how effective the ground fields that is the study what we try to do it uh, and summarize on this way. Uh, so, let us have a uh, concluding these lectures with a river control structures that uh, every users of a river down here should understand that a healthy river is absolutely vital for a healthy economy and healthy tourism industry with joy weather hill. Thank you very much for this lecture.